In this episode, we're taking what we learned from the last episode and using our keyframe animation to create some beautiful transitions. So let's get into it. So before we start creating transitions, we first just need to make sure that we've got two video clips on our timeline. So I've got this one clip here and then it runs straight into this second clip. So we're going to begin with a level transition. So this is just a white flash transition. So we're going to select this first video clip. We'll go into effects. We'll search for levels. There you go. Levels should be under adjust and we'll drop levels on this first video clip. Now we're going to scroll towards the very end of this clip. And in levels, we'll go to the RGB white input level and increase this all the way up to around 100, 120%, 115, somewhere around there. And we'll create a new keyframe by selecting the toggle animation button. Now we'll go three frames to the left. So go one, two, three, and then we'll pull this all the way back up to 255. So if we go frame by frame, you can see it's slowly getting brighter. Now we'll go to the second video clip. We'll make sure we're at the very beginning of this second clip and we'll drag the levels onto this clip. Now we'll just scroll down and find white input level and we'll pull this all the way up to that same number. So I think it was 115 on our last one. We'll create a brand new keyframe by selecting the toggle animation button and then we'll just move 10 frames to the right. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then we'll pull this to 255. Now, when we play this back, you can see we've created this really nice transition between these two clips. Of course, if you wanted to make this transition brighter, then you can just change the value of this. So rather than being 115, this can be around 50. And then we'll do the same number at the start of the second clip. So we'll pull this down to around 50. And when we play this back, you'll see this looks really great. Of course, if you wanted to elongate this transition, you wanted to make it longer and slower, then you could just increase the gap between those keyframes like so. And that creates this really nice white flash transition. So that was one way of transitioning. This is the white flash transition. The next transition that we're going to talk about involves adjusting the position. So we're just going to delete levels. And we're finished with this transition, so we'll delete those. And then we'll go to the very end of this first clip. So we'll go to the very end and then we'll go back on ourselves one frame. And now we'll create a brand new keyframe on position and then we'll go 10 frames over to the left. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Create a brand new keyframe on the position. Then we'll go to that second keyframe again. Make sure we're hovering over it. And then we'll pull the position of this over to the right, making sure that that clip is now off screen. So somewhere around here, there you go. On my example, it's 2956. So it starts on and slowly animates off. So from here, we just want to go back to that first keyframe. So here, we'll drag this video clip onto video layer two, and then we'll drag this second clip over to the left to meet the cursor. Of course, if you're struggling to get this to match up perfectly, then you can just go over to this section here and select the snap in timeline or that it is S. The keyboard shortcut is S for that. And that will just snap to the cursor. Makes it much easier. Now we'll just make sure we're in the right position. So that is marrying up to this keyframe here. So we'll go back to the second clip, create a brand new keyframe on position. Go back to the first clip, go to the second keyframe, make sure we're right on top of it. Then we'll go to the second clip and we'll create a brand new keyframe on the position again. Now we'll go over to that first keyframe again. And to make life easy for ourselves, we're just going to turn off video layer two. So we'll select the eyeball. That is the toggle track output button. So we'll turn that off. And then we'll just pull the position of this second clip over to the left like so. Now you can just turn that first layer back on and we'll play this back. And as you can see, we've got this really cool transition now happening. Of course, though, if you wanted to apply some motion blur to this, then that is completely fine. We're just going to begin by creating a new adjustment layer. So we'll go new item. So the new item button and we'll go adjustment layer. Press OK and then we'll drag this over onto video layer three and cut that so that it matches this entire duration of the transition. Now, an adjustment layer is essentially just an umbrella 
that affects everything. So you put an adjustment layer on top of everything and any effect that you apply to the adjustment layer will be applied to anything below the adjustment layer. So that means if I went into effects and I searched for levels, I could drop the levels plugin onto the adjustment layer and increase the brightness of the adjustment layer. And because it's on top of this part of the video, it will adjust the brightness of those two clips. You'll see if I go back in time, at this point, even though this is the same video clip, at this point in time, there is no brightness effect applied. But when we go over to the adjustment layer, that is now there. And of course, we can adjust the keyframe animation of this to start off and animate on. But that's not what we're doing for this transition. Instead, we're using the adjustment layer to create a blur. So in the effects tab, we're just going to search for blur. And that should load up loads of different types of blurs. But we're going to search for the directional blur. So we'll drop that onto the adjustment layer like so. And then we'll change the direction to 90 degrees. And as you can see, if I increase the blur length, that is how this is affected. At the very beginning of the adjustment layer, we'll turn the blur length to zero and make sure we create a brand new keyframe on blur length. We'll go to the very end of that adjustment layer, create a brand new keyframe. And then we'll go in between these two points and we'll increase the blur length up to around 50. Now when we play this back, that creates a sense of motion blur. And this motion blur is essentially just blending the cut between these two clips. So without the adjustment layer and the directional blur, it looks quite sharp and it's quite a rough transition. But when we add the motion blur and the adjustment layer, it just blends everything and it makes it look a lot more beautiful. So that is just basically like a basic whip pan or a slide to the right transition. And we created that using our keyframe animation. Now the technique that I use to create this transition can be applied for all different types of directions. So you don't just have to travel to the right, you can travel up, you can travel down, you can travel to the left, to the right, to the corner. It's completely up to you. And you can also do a scale in or scale out effect with that as well. I am going to show you though a cool transition with rotation. So we'll go to this first clip on video layer two. We'll go to these points and we'll delete these keyframes. So we'll start with it on screen. We'll also go to this second video clip and delete those keyframes. Now we'll go to this first video clip. We'll go to the start of that transition. So where the adjustment layer sits and we'll create a brand new keyframe on rotation. Then we'll go a few frames over to the right. So we'll go to the end minus one and we'll rotate this around to 180 degrees. like so. Now we're just going to do the exact same thing with the other clip. So at this specific point in time, so marrying up with the second keyframe, we're going to select the video clip on video layer one. We'll create a brand new keyframe on rotation, go back to that first keyframe and we'll rotate this the opposite way. So minus 180. So the top one goes to plus 180. This one's going to start at minus 180 and rotate around to zero. So as you can see, like so. Now, roughly halfway between that motion, we're just going to cut the end of that first clip so it transitions into the second clip like so. And then what I like to do to just really blend this is to pull the adjustment layer up. We'll pull that up to two different levels. So we'll pull that up to there. Then we're just going to press C on the keyboard to make it cut. And then we're just going to copy this specific clip here. So we'll go option, hold option, and we'll drag that up. So we've just made a copy of this one section. Now from here, we're just going to increase the scale of this specific clip up. So we'll scale this up and that's just going to help to get rid of those black edges. So when we do this rotation transition, it looks a lot nicer. There you go, like so. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this layer here. So we'll drag everything up another layer again, press C on the keyboard, back to V, hold option, and then we'll drag that up onto video layer two. So from here, we're just going to go to the end of the adjustment layer or the end of the transition. We're just going to move this clip. So we're going to clip it over to the cursor. Then we're just going to grab these two clips, the two bottom clips and drag those over to the cursor as well. Now we'll go to that bottom clip and like we did before, we're just going to increase the scale. And when we play this back, you'll see we've got this really cool rotation transition happening. So essentially it was the keyframe animation mixed with the adjustment layer motion blur create. 
So with the keyframe animation and the adjustment layer motion blur, we've created this really awesome rotation transition. So we've adjusted the brightness, we've adjusted the position and the rotation. I'm just going to show you one more transition and this is going to be an effect based transition. So we'll delete everything so far. We'll just make sure we've got these two video clips like so. And then in effects and presets, we're going to search for blur again. This time we can search for a different blur. So let's go for Gaussian blur this time. We'll add that onto the first clip. At the very end, we're going to increase the blurriness all the way up to around 100. And then we'll make sure we select repeat edge pixels. The reason why if I go back onto this clip, if I turn this off, you can see there's this black border created around the video and we don't want that. So we're going to turn that on to get rid of that black border. And then at the very end, we'll create a brand new keyframe on blurriness. We'll go five keyframes to the left and pull this down to zero. Now we'll drop the Gaussian blur onto the second clip. We'll go to the very beginning, pull this up to around 100 again, repeat edge pixels, brand new keyframe on the blurriness. We'll move 10 keyframes to the right, roughly 10, and we'll pull this down to zero. Now when we play this back, you'll see we've got this nice blur in blur out transition like so. If that was too subtle for you though, then you can always increase the blurriness on those points. So rather than being 100, we'll make this somewhere around 300. Let's play this back. There you go. That looks a lot better. And there you go. That is how you can create your own custom made transitions inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. In the next video, I'm talking about the essential graphics panel and how you can import and edit MOGRT files inside of Adobe Premiere Pro.